All right, what's up guys? This is Casey coming at you with a Luna Light Orcus deck profile. I've been playing the deck for about two months now and uh, I think I got a pretty good list cooked up for the new format. Mermaid being banned sucks, rest in peace. But uh, yeah, the deck's been performing really well at Locals and uh, online and uh, I just thought I would share my ideas and kind of put the deck profile out there and see what you guys think. So. Uh, Obviously, uh, for the Luna Light package, we will start with our three Kaleido Chick. It's the Armageddon Knight of the deck. One of the best cards in the deck. Got your second best card in the deck, Tiger. If you see a combination of these two, you're probably going to win. Uh, the two Yellow Martin. Uh, really, really good card. Um, Got your Emerald Bird. I decided to keep this into the deck. A lot of people are cutting it, but when you mill this off your Curious or hit it off of a Danger, it's just a free extender. And then we got our Zephyros and a Grepper. I decided not to play Armageddon Knight because, I mean, you got a ton of Foolishes in the deck as it is. You know, you have Curious, Foolish, you know, Kaleido Chick. This one actually can special summon itself without using your normal summon and it also discards the card out of your hand and like almost every card in this deck wants to be discarded or in the grave so yeah that's going to make up the Luna Light package as far as monsters uh, we are playing dangers um they're just the best extenders they give your deck gas and help you dig into your side deck things like that obviously you got the big six the two jackalope two suchinoko to Nessie. I did have this card cut out of the list for a while and I was just playing two moth and one chubacabra. I don't agree with playing like Thunderbird or Bigfoot because I just I feel like uh they're kind of win more cards. I mean your engine itself is does so many things and then to top it off I play the one Mothman and the one Chubacabra. Um if you were to mill this or off of a uh off a of curious and then you have this in hand, this is good. These are just rank four extenders and feels good when you can get them to resolve and continue your plays, help play through hand traps, things like that. Here's the Orcus package. It's very small, it's a lot different. I decided to play two harps. This was at three, because I was trying to mill this off Curious, you know, if you can, um, or just see it in your opening hand and discard it for like, a perfume or something like that I mean it's just good to see and then I play the one skeleton the one wand and the one nightmare this is now essentially the garnet of the deck you don't want to see this in your opening hand you want this to be in deck for the harp but it's not the worst thing ever if you do open it and discard it and send this off curious you can still dump the wand and bring the heart back and sometimes extend to an extra rank four so yeah that's the orcus package then we'll go for the spell cards. We have the three perfume. No explanation needed. It's not once per turn. The card is broken. Uh, three tanky. I did have it at two for a while, but I found you know opening just ways to get the chick tiger is really essential. And I built the deck really for consistency. I mean, you just want to get the chick tiger as soon as possible. And then foolish barrel goods. Playing this at three, everybody says it bricks at three. I disagree. I think the card's amazing. It has a lot of utility, especially because some other cards you'll see we're playing. If you open this and you don't need to send your perfume or your serenade dance, uh, you can use this to dump, dump your curious griffin target and then still use your curious to dump your harp to get your orcus engine live. So it's kind of my theory on that. And then some support spells, Into the Void, Foolish Burial, and Card Destruction. These two in combination are crazy. I mean, Foolish is Foolish, it's just a necessity for the deck, but Into the Void, I I was playing it at multiples, but I found opening it in multiples just, I don't know. You, you have enough gas in the deck as it is, just seeing this is just kind of a win more card. And same with this, if you have a handful of dangers and some Orcus cards, this kind of sets your graveyard up and then you just keep playing from there with a new hand. It's 
really not fair. If you resolve this, if this card resolves, you're probably gonna win. I mean, it's crazy. And then the last spell is the Babel for the Orcus engine. Uh, the deck, 90% of the time, you're gonna go uh, Curious Griffin set up with the Dingirsu with Babel. See, and as far as that goes, my main deck choice for the Curious Griffin right now is Eradicator. Because at my locals in my area, there's a lot of control, a lot of pendulum, stuff like that. But as you'll see in the side, we have a lot of um, a lot of coverage in the side deck to go with that. So this could be any floodgate, any kind of card of your choice that you want to set off Curious Griffin. So yeah, there's that. Then I am main decking three impermanents. Uh, it's the only hand trap we're playing in the deck. Uh, it's the most flexible. Doesn't lose the call by the grave. Um, and uh, Opening in multiples isn't the worst, you know, I mean, you can still play if you open multiples of this. And the last two cards in the main are obviously the Crescendo and the Serenade Dance. So that's the main. Uh, it's a 43 card main. I know a lot of people are kind of against that, but I haven't had any issues with the deck. It's, it's super consistent. It's super strong. The ceiling's ridiculous. So off to the extra deck for our rank fours, we got Abyss Dweller. We got the Force Tricks, and then Tornado Dragon. You got your Azathot package, your Niarla, your Azathot. And then my own little spice, Evil Swarm Nightmare. This card is severely underrated. Like when it, when they special summon, like on Salomon Great, when they special summon the Spinny and it gets booked face down. I mean, it's not once per turn. So you have two book, Book of Moons on your opponent's turn. It's really broken. To round out the Xyz, the one Dengirsu. That makes up our Xyz package. And then for links, uh, link twos, we got Phoenix and Barricade Board Blocker. This card is amazing because you can summon this and pitch a card out of your hand that you want into the grave. And it doesn't, it doesn't check for a target to add back to hand until the end phase. So you can use this to discard a card, and then if you end up milling your Babel or a Tanky off of your off your Curious, you can add it back to hand or just keep it as a resource. So it's really good. Then you got your Galatea, your Long Gearsu, Curious. And then my Link Fours. You got Griffin, Boral Sword, and Appaloosa. If you open a really good hand, you can end with like Appaloosa plus the Curious Griffin combo, or like. Appaloosa with, with a Crescendo, Galatea, and like two rank fours. It's the ceiling of the deck is just by far the highest I've ever played. It's insane. So that's the extra 15 cards, uh, tokens, whatever. In the side deck, I uh, actually took a different approach. We're siding this Granite Gallant because it allows you to only side one copy of Nibiru, frees up side deck space, and it's so easy to extend into this after Azathot. So it just applies so much pressure to, you know, end on your ending board, and then instead of making force tricks to get Zephyros, you can make this and search Nibiru, and then just end with Dweller instead of Dweller and Nightmare or, some, or whatever one you would choose. So not only are they staring down your board of, you know whatever you end with plus they know you have nibiru in hand so they're not going to extend to otk beside the tiger king uh it's just a good utility card for the deck it gets you to your tinky and really it's just in here for thunder dragons i mean it, it blows them out of the water then obviously being an orcus format you got your three lantias no need to explain that also for orcus and the mirror match or any kind of combo deck you got no material this card really shuts down the dragon link thunder deck that's running around right now and my choice for back row obviously there's two twins and one cosmic i opted to play a cosmic because i have a couple true draco players in my locals and uh dump opening if you if you do hard draw this i mean you can pop a set and then the next turn when they try to flip but there can be only one lose one turn whatever floodgate you can banish this from the grave if you send it with like foolish goods and it's another way for you to keep playing under under a uh floodgate so and then i side three curious griffin targets so obviously if you're imperial order for striker you know pendulum 
guru, a lot of decks that are using spell, that spells are critical to get them to their plays. Uh, it's just a really good card. And then anti-spell for pendulum. Like I said, there's a lot of pendulum at my locals. And then summon limit for, you know, combo decks and stuff like that. And then this comes up really well. Like both of these can get you into a really good grind game. And you can like kind of recur your chick tiger or whatever and just kind of stay alive. And it, it's just been working out really well. So that's kind of my theory behind that. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be the deck profile. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. If you'd like to see some more, um, comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the build. Let me know, you know, some things you would change and kind of some feedback on my thoughts on the deck. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy and uh, see you later.